So um, that, those are the historical efforts to map the Milky Way, first with the, the star counting method by the Herschels, and then Shapley's use of globular clusters. And when we map out the Milky Way in modern times, we're looking for um, much more detail. We no longer only care about how big is the galaxy and what, what um, shape is it, but we wanna know specifically um, where are the spiral arms located? How many spiral arms are there? Um, you know, are there spurs that come off of the spiral arms? Is there more fine structure um, than, than just like a small number of spiral arms, right? So this is what we're looking for when we try to look for a modern map. We also wanna know how much gas is out there, how much dust is out there, right? Um, so basically we're trying to get a full picture as if we're doing a census. Um, and when we try to do this, it's important to use different wavelength ranges. So um, the visible wavelength range is not still particularly useful because we can't see through the dust in the galactic disk, right? Um, Shapley had better luck in, in mapping out the extent of the Milky Way, just mostly because there's less dust out there in the halo. But we can use other wavelength ranges as a different way to get around this problem. Because if we want to know where all the gas is and all the stars are in the disk of the Milky Way, um, then we need to look into the disk. We have no choice. So we can look in different wavelength ranges, such as the infrared, for example, here, and see a lot more detail. Um, still some dust blockage here, right? in the infrared range, but it's a lot more of a clear picture than in the visible. And you can do even better in the radio. Um, in your activity today, you'll look at different uh, views of the galaxy in all different ranges. All right, so the way that we've developed our modern map of the galaxy is by using both the infrared and radio wavelength ranges together. And what we find is that there are um, essentially two large arms and several smaller arms. So we've got um, this Scutum Centaurus arm and then the Perseus arm. The Perseus is um, the main arm where our sun is located off a minor spur. So um, these, you know, the total number of arms is fairly well known at this point, but there's still some debate as to what is a major arm, what is a minor arm, and what is a spur. Um, but this is the basic picture that we've come up with we can look at the extent of some of the different objects here too. So when we zoom in on the sun's location on the Orion spur here off of the Perseus arm, here's the sun, I've made a little sun icon to keep track of it. Um, all the things that we see in the Hubble Space Telescope uh, that are kind of nebulae are fairly nearby us typically um, for the very simple reason that the Hubble is not a visible wavelength instrument. And so it can't see through the disc. So we are looking in our local neighborhood at a lot of the wonders in the Hubble. So for example, the Orion Nebula that I showed you earlier, that's a close neighbor of us. It's only 1400 light years away. It's within our own Orion Spur. Um, the Gum Nebula is 1470 light years away. It's also still basically within the same spur. Um, and even Cygnus X, which is a black hole and blue supergiant binary star system, um, that's still within our own spur. So there's just, you know, we're, we're not seeing very far afield uh, when we look at objects like this. You can imagine maybe it would be cool to be able to look at nebulae across the galaxy, but that's really difficult to do because, again, you can't look at it in the visible light range. All right, so back to the scale of the galaxy. Here's the sun, and this is the orbit of the sun. All right, and we look at the overall galactic disk. The um, total thickness of the disk is about 2,000 light years for the thick disk, and then 100 light years for the thin disk. So the thin disk is where there are uh, most of the stars are located, and then some stars are a little bit above or a little bit below that main part of the disk. So the sun is, I can't remember, something like, I don't remember how many light years off of the, uh, the center of the disk, something like 70 light years. The total diameter of our disk is 100,000 light years. And the distance of sun from galactic center is 26,000. So this is about a quarter of the total diameter. So it's about halfway out from the center. All right, if we think about the, you know, size of the disk is 100,000 light years diameter. 
and Shapley's measurement of the galactic cluster halo was 30 kiloparsecs. Um, here's a problem for you. So going back to unit conversions, we know that for every um, 3.26 light years, that's how many light years are in one parsec. So when you compare to the halo diameter, um, is that much larger, about the same, or much smaller than the disk? Okay, I'm now seeing most votes for B, that the disk size and the halo size are about the same. So again, this disk size was, this is from our modern mapping estimate. The halo size was from Shapley's mapping with globular clusters in 1917. And yes, they are indeed about the same. Uh, the reason for that is that if I take 3.26 light years times 30 kiloparsecs, then I get, I guess, nine and three quarters times a thousand, right? That's what the kilo prefix means. So that's, um, I guess, 900 in, or 97,000 light years. So that's about the same as 100,000 light years. So it seems like Shapley did a pretty good job in 1917 of figuring out the exact size of the Milky Way using those globular clusters, which I think is pretty remarkable. Um, so the disk and the halo are about the same size. Um, this is the what we would call most of the visible matter of the Milky Way is located in those locations. Most of the bright stars, most of the gas and dust is restricted to the disk. The halo has some of those old dim stars and globular clusters. And then this entire system is embedded within a much larger dark matter halo. So we can't see this, um, but we can infer its presence through gravitational signals. And we'll talk about that next week. Um, the dark matter halo is about 90 kiloparsecs across. So it's by far the most dominant component of our galaxy. Um, and it in fact contains most of the total mass. Um, so when we talk about the visible mass versus the total mass of the galaxy, by the visible mass, I mean everything here within the halo and the disk.